Hey there, horror fans. David Howard Thornton here, Art the Clown himself, and you're watching Slasher Pepper. Kill you later. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> I'm just going to ask the first question. All uh, right. How are you? How are you doing uh, with this whole pandemic going on? <laughs> I'm surviving the best I can. I live here in New York City, so I, I'm, you know, waist deep in the heart of it right now. So yeah. I I only go outside just to get groceries and do laundry, and that is it. I have not left my block in, like, six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, very weird. I mean, like the only way to save the world right now to stay, is to stay home. <laughs> Yeah, it is. I wish more people realized that. <laughs> true. Yeah, true. Yeah, we're, we're having. Like, um, I don't know if you've seen, but we have all these massive protests going on over here right I now. Just say. It's just. <laughs> I I even saw like people in nurse costumes just standing in front of the protesters like that. You know. Yeah. Oh, those are actual nurses too. They were they went out there and they were just trying to cause a barricade so oh. they couldn't block the hospitals. Because that's yeah, what they were doing. They were causing gridlock, and so emergency vehicles couldn't go through to get to the hospitals. Yeah, that's so it's, stupid, man. It makes no sense at all. It's just like, come on, folks. You know, the sooner all of us just do this, the sooner we can get out of this mess. It's just yeah, like, exactly. It has to be a joint effort. You know, like We're only strong as our weakest link, and it looks like we got a lot of weak links right now. It's just yeah. like... Uh, yeah, especially when I see uh, what other countries are doing and how effective it has been, like South Korea. I'm like, my gosh, they've got their, they got everything just boom, boom, boom over there. Like, why can't, like, the United States is supposed to be a world leader in this kind of stuff, and we're falling so behind. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pitiful. Yeah, so I digress. Down and stuff, but <laughs> let's just yeah. that topic for now. Yeah, everybody's out of school right now. <laughs> <laughs> So am I, so. Yeah. Um, how did you get the job of playing Art the Clown? <clears throat> well, I just auditioned for it. I just they, they posted an online uh, notice looking for a tall, skinny actor that had clowning or physical comedy experience for the role of a lifetime. And <laughs> I had seen uh, All Hallows Eve, so I was already familiar with the character. So I was like, oh, my God, I'm perfect for this. Yes, 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 yes. So I contacted my agent. So I'm like, please trust me on this. I can knock this out of the park. And so they submitted me, and I went in there. And um, the audition was interesting because I'm used to having a script when I go into an audition, and everybody else had scripts there. I didn't, and I freaked out. And so I walked in the room like, I'm sorry, I don't have a script. And like, oh, you don't need one. Art doesn't talk. I'm like, I know that, but everybody else's scripts like, no, no, well, then – so I'm like, well, what do you want me to do? And they're like, just come up with the scene where you uh, decapitate a guy and go. And I'm like, oh, can I think about it just for a second? I'm like, no, no, no. We just want to see how you can just operate on your feet. Now go. And I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> so I just did this whole thing where like cartoonishly like snuck up behind my victim, knocked him out, sawed off his head with a hacksaw, picked it up, tasted the blood, didn't like it. So, so I took out a salt shaker and seasoned it, <laughs> tasted it again, kind of bathed in it, and just like skipped on a little my merry way, and that's what <laughs> got me the part. <laughs> They're like, okay, that's so we, awesome. we want you. So it's, it's changed my life. That's, yeah, that's what I always tell uh, other actors. It's, it's always important to take some kind of form of um, improv training because you never know in an audition when someone's going to just throw you a curveball like that and yeah. expect you to perform like that on the spot. Wow, so, that's great. Yeah. Do you think uh, we'll ever get to see that scene like played out in a movie? Oh, who knows? Maybe one day. Maybe one day we might do that. Uh, you can actually see the the audition online. Damien released it about a year or so ago. Oh, wow. That's yeah, so you Look it up, and it's, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> if I can find it, I'll link it down below uh, in, the, in the description. Awesome, yeah. yeah. I, I had less gray hair fit then, so that <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, man. It's hard to believe that was like five years ago now. I'm just like, wow, that's gone by fast. Well, five years ago? Yeah, well, that's, that's when I auditioned about this part time, part. five years ago. 2018, the first one came out, right? Yeah, we started filming the, the fall of 2015. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I love the film, by the way. 
Thank you, thank you. Yeah. I love it too. It's fun. It's it's not just because I'm in it. It's actually just a fun film to watch. Even I, I hate watching myself in anything I do. I'm like so cr- critical and everything. This is like the first time I've enjoyed watching myself. I'm like, this is actually an entertaining film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do do okay. you often uh, rewatch the film yourself? Oh yeah, there's been a few times. Yeah, I've probably seen about eight or nine times now because oh, you know wow. sometimes other people want to watch it, and they want to watch it with me. So I'm like, yeah. oh sure, I don't mind. I'll, I usually do some kind of running commentary or something like that while I'm watching it with them too. So it's kind of fun. I actually did a um a, one of those like Facebook uh, watch parties with oh the like last a week. watch party yeah yeah, right. yeah so I was just sitting there typing like you know little, little trivia facts and stuff like that while we're watching it and that was kind of fun and like uh to get back on a topic of like the making of and stuff do you have any uh, like fond memories of the set oh gosh yeah i mean it was it was tough though because we were a very 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 low budget film so you know like the one of the buildings we filmed in in trent new jersey had no heat and had no running water which was not fun. That that building is exactly what it looked like on the inside. Like that toilet was that nasty. Oh, so, seriously? It's, it's a good thing we didn't use that toilet. We had to use a out, like a porta potty outside. But oh, but uh, it's we we made the best of what we had though, and so we we still had fun with everything. I think probably one of the more fun nights on set was um, I, I, it's the night they were filming Jenna getting shot in the the face. And I, I'm they're doing her like you know, practical effects with the blood spurting out and stuff like that. So I'm in the other room just waiting to go on. I had my full makeup on, blood all over me, and it's like two o'clock in the morning. Oh, and there's geez. this argument going on on the street outside with these two ladies. And so I'm like, sure, I'll just entertain myself by watching this argument play out. So who knows? <laughs> So I'm just sitting there watching it like I'm like watching like episode of Jerry Springer and like one of them <laughs> looks up and sees me in the window and I forget what I looked like. I'm just like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> like her eyes just bugged out and she screams. The other one sees me screams. They go taken off and I'm just like, oh, that's hysterical. And about <laughs> like 10 or 15 minutes later, like Damien and our producers come in. They're like just giggling and you know just very happy and i'm like oh well, what's going on guys like oh we got some someone here that wants to meet you i'm like oh cool bring them in i was like oh they they want you to come out and see them i'm like okay cool and at the time um our producer phil was working on a, a movie with tom sizemore and so i was like oh maybe tom sizemore came to visit set today that's awesome cool so I was excited and there was this like big roll up garage door. And so they told me just to wait there until they told me to come out and I'm like, okay, sure, 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 sure. And they're like, Dave, come out. So I like roll up the garage door and my butt puckers. Cause I look in front of me and there's about 10 to 15 of New Jersey's finest all in like complete riot gear, like, you know, <laughs> assault rifles, grenade launchers, shields, all that kind of stuff. And I'm just like, <gasps> and I'm like, okay, okay, how do I diffuse the situation? So I'm just like, what's up, guys? <laughs> and like silence. And I'm like, oh my God, I am going to die. I am about to die. Oh my God. Oh my God. And they just start laughing at me. And I'm like, oh, they, and they're like, yeah, man, if you had come out first, we would have shot you on sight. I'm like, I believe <laughs> you. And it's really good because, like, I, I wasn't using the porta potty when they arrived because that's where they arrived. And I was like, oh, man, I can only imagine just walking out of that porta potty covered in blood, dressed like that. Oh, and right. like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a film <laughs> it's like i'm just an actor, I'm not an actor. it's not real it's fake blood <laughs> yeah sure boom <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> um so if there was any character or any horror icon uh you could battle as art the clown uh in a movie like freddy versus jason uh, style yeah. who would it be uh besides yeah. pennywise um uh, the killer clowns from outer space or any other clown character yeah yeah pennywise would be too easy anyways i think that would be the one time art would talk because he would just sit there and bad mouth <laughs> and defeat him that way just like you're a loser man you're a loser. <laughs> no one likes you you're not even fun you're not even a real clown you're a little poser <laughs> exactly yeah i um, i think like 
I think it would be fun for him to go up against like um, Ash. Oh, that would be yeah. a lot of fun. Because it's like they're both insane. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like usually I was thinking he, go, for him to go up against a villain, but like yeah, it's like I, I think seeing him go up against Ash that would be pretty insane. Yeah, that's that's like the answer I did not see coming. Um, yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah. I, I've usually, I've sometimes said Freddy Krueger before, but that just came to me. It's like, oh no, Ash. <laughs> yeah, that's something pretty cool because, like, on set of the Evil Dead movies, they have so much uh, fake blood, and yeah. when you watch Terrifier, you just can tell that there's so much blood in there. So that really matches oh, yeah. up well. Um, oh, I, I like. I remember watching like an episode of the the Evil Dead series recently, and there's like the scene where just there's just happening all this blood just spraying in Bruce Campbell's <laughs> face, and I'm like, it looks awesome, but at the same time, I'm sitting there going, God, that had been a miserable day for him on set, because oh, right. <laughs> I know how yeah. miserable it is with all that stuff too. It's just like, oh man, like, <laughs> so yeah. Funny. I'm like, I hope that was just one take. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, just a little bit more to the right. We need to get it exactly perfect, you know? Another take. Because <laughs> that's happened to me. It's just like, oh, we got to do this again. So they have to clean me up. And, you know, it's, and usually we don't have heat. So it's like cold and sticky. I'm like, oh, God, oh, I got to do this again. Oh. <laughs> and you mentioned that it was really cold in the bowling. So <laughs> the cold blood doesn't help at all. <laughs> Oh, no, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. We, we had like one day filming part two in uh, an exterior shot and it was, um, <clears throat> well, it was sleeting and snowing the day before and it had stopped snowing right when I got to set that night. So it was, you know, below freezing and I'm covered in blood and, and it's just like, oh, God, it's like I had blood all over my hands and I felt like I had just knives stabbing into my hands because it was oh, so man. cold. That's yeah. so bad. <laughs> Oh yeah, but you you deal with it. You just like you just like because it's it looks freaking awesome when you see it on screen. So you have to suffer for that little bit of time for stuff that's gonna last forever. So it's, that's how I look at it. It's worth the the pain. <laughs> there are a lot of uh, people that are scared to death of clowns, as you probably know best. <laughs> um, but what are some of your own? <laughs> yeah. Gosh, I'm. One of them's so elementary. It's just like it's it's the dark. I I don't like like open doors, like dark voids. Like I can't have like a like the door to my room open at night with the lights out, and I can't have a closet open or something because like, it's just like I don't like looking to that dark void because that that little voice inside my head, that little five year old Dave is going, "There's a monster in there. There's something <laughs> peering out at you." I'm like I can't. I just can't do that. That and uh, tornadoes. Tornadoes freak me out because I was in a Category 4 uh, tornado when I was a kid, and it was pretty traumatic. So I get a little bit of PTSD when it comes to those. Where where were you at uh, at the time when that happened? I was at my church. Um, it w I was having handbell choir practice, you know, just a little bing, 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 <laughs> handbells, and... Yeah, we, like, we didn't even get like an advance warning that this tornado was coming. It just dropped out of the sky. But our associate minister was a hemp seed driver. So he, he worked for like the ambulances and stuff like that. So they had radioed him, thankfully, and told him that there was a tornado heading straight towards us. And so they got us down into the basement right when the tornado hit the church. It, it was okay. scary, though. Scary. Like, I just remember my mom throwing herself on top of me to protect me and everything right when it hit the church. And it was just like, oh. Yeah, that must be traumatizing. Yeah, yeah you don't, you never want to go through something like that. <laughs> well, like to see, is, to see like family members in panic uh, must be like one of the worst parts about it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like, I was like nine years old at the time, too. So it's like, it was like a week or so before my birthday. It's like, oh, oh right. great. Yeah. Like, all my birthday presents were in the trunk of our car, too, and the car got totaled, but, like, somehow they survived. Oh, that's like My mom had, like, I, like, the, the trunk open, and, like, there was, like, a Lego set in there or something like that and some other stuff. So I was just like, oh, that's just, yay, my birthday presents survived. <laughs> you know, that's, a, that's the only thing you care about when you're nine years old. You're like, yeah, <laughs> I got my Lego set. Um, what are some of your own favorite horror movies? Mm. 
Um, whew, there's so many. There's so many good ones yeah. out there. Um, I mean, r- recently I've been going back and watching the uh, Friday the 13th films again on because I know they oh, have right. all on Prime. Except they don't, they don't have number three on Prime, which is like, why, why, why can't we have the whole collection? That's, uh, so yeah, but um, I would say my top five in no particular order would be The Omen, The Exorcist, Original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The First Halloween, and uh, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3, Dream Warriors. Oh, nice. Yeah, that, those are really... All totally different from each other, too, but they're yeah, all fun. Yeah. Do you think there will be a Terrifier 3? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We we Damien has always had a trilogy in mind, at least for this character. So uh, we're setting everything up in part two for part three. Oh, I nice. I you could say. So, yeah. we, we know how we want to start part three, and we know how we want to end part three. We just got to get everything in between. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah. then maybe yeah, like a so Terrifier 4 or 5 until he goes through space, you know? <laughs> it could be. I mean, like, what I think is kind of cool about the ending without – well, without giving anything away for the, the ending for, for Part 3, it's like I think ending for – is just a trilogy if we decide not to do any more, but also be the type of ending that could open it up to possible sequels too. Right. So okay. it's, it's, it's a really – it's – I wish I could say what we're going to do, but it's, it's so cool. It's not, I've never seen this done before in a horror film, so I'm like, hmm. Wow, now I'm really interested. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's very appropriate for the character, I'll say that. All right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you own the character. I mean, <laughs> you, were, you were standing just looking at two, two people arguing, and you waved at them, <laughs> and you were that character, you know, <laughs> without even yeah, realizing just like, it. <laughs> <laughs> you just are art the clown <laughs> yeah i guess without the killing in real life though thankfully <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and uh do you have any advice for younger and upcoming actors yeah um first of all i mean i didn't get professionally trained per se in like theater i i didn't go to school for it i got my degree in teaching but i would say you know that's one thing i i kind of wish i had done earlier because i think i would be further along in my career than i am now but i don't know but i mean that's you know there's always something you could learn though so there you know i i'm i'm a consummate like student i'm always wanting to learn new things so i i i always say you know even if you aren't going to take classes just observe everybody around you everything you see on tv everything even in commercials and just everyday life just observe people and like notice things people do and just you know take note take mental notes i'm always like i'm like a human sponge and I'm always just watching people and like just constantly putting things up in my mental Rolodex I can use for later. Little, little, just the way people move, stuff like that. And I'm like, hmm, I like that. I, I I'll have to remember that for later. But it's you know that's the thing. It's like actors, you can always learn something new, some new skill set, something 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 new. So always you know learn, learn from your surroundings, learn from oh, that's your actually so really interesting and good advice. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm more of a person that wants to be, uh, like, director or, anything, or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I never really thought of, if you want to be an actor, you just got to look at the real world, you know? I mean, that's the way people behave. And that's the thing oh, yeah. you kind of want to want to recreate yourself as a, as, a, as a character. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's how I approach character work, too. It's just, like, I, I get something in mind in my head. I'm like, okay, so what is this – who is this character like? Like what type of person or what type of like other famous characters this person like? And that's like a yeah, case in point. I, I kind of based, um, even though art had been played by Mike Gianelli in All Hallows Eve, he set a great foundation for me. But I wanted to add a little bit more to the character than what he had done with it. I wanted to add a little bit more of the, the clowning nature to him. And so I was like, well, you know, let's let's look at like um, art. He's kind of like an evil Mr. Bean in a way. <laughs> and and so I, I kind of started with that and then i also was like well you know what art is basically the bastard child of freddy krueger and harpo marx 
And so that really helped me figure out who he was. It's like a blend of Harpo Marx, Freddy Krueger, and Mr. Bean. And uh, <laughs> also, I took a little bit from my my friend Stefan Carl, who was Robbie Rotten from Lazy Town. And I put okay. a little bit of Stefan into the role, too. So, yeah, he, he I, I was his understudy for five years with How the Grinch Stole Christmas. So he, he taught me a lot about physical comedy. He really helped fine-tune my skills there. So I put a lot of those. So those were like my four things I kind of pulled from for the character and just kind of whoop, blended in my mind. Also, I kind of look at art as like, you know, um, a, a horror, like a oh, slasher, especially a slasher fanboy. He's he's a little bit of almost every single slasher icon. There's little bits of traits from all those yeah. different guys, from Jason, Mike Myers, Freddy, Chucky, Leatherface, Pinhead, all those guys, you know, Hannibal Lecter. There's little bits of all those guys in art. Yeah, Michael stalking, Jason's not talking, you know, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's that's a good way yeah. to look at it. Yeah, yeah. Um, he has that, I, like, this sadistic nature that Pinhead has, you know, where he just likes to torment people. It's yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> yeah, there's little bits and pieces of everybody in him. That's why I love about him. He's basically a, a, a true horror fanboy. Yeah, exactly. That went bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I love it so much. The film is just like basically a, a love letter to horror, to the genre, to the fans, to uh, slashers, you know, uh, especially oh, yeah. to like the 80s uh, era of it, um, which that's really that really shows through the film, through the direction. Oh, it was purely intentional, too. We. We, we had so many homages to, like, previous films that came before us, you know, so especially there's a lot of Craven, you know, references in there, especially. I was like, we even have some references in part two as well. So I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, some of those I, I was realizing while I was watching uh, some of these Friday the 13th movies. It's like, oh, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Cool. So that's where I'm taking you from. <laughs> yeah. It's like, that's a nice little twist on that. Okay, cool. <laughs> and then Halloween even uh, did an homage to you with the pumpkin uh, kill. Yeah, I love that. You know, people are like, oh, you should be mad about that. I'm like, oh, my God, why would I be mad about that? That's, that's you know, imitation is the finest form of flattery, considering that we, we've paid so much homage to the greats that came before us. I mean, I wouldn't be – Art the Clown would not be a character if it wasn't for Mike Myers really starting the whole thing exactly. back in the day. So it's like, yeah, for Mike Myers to be doing one of my kills, hell yes. Yeah, that's cool. awesome. I love it. I love it. And I know that um, that that was probably intentional too because um, uh, Mike Levy, who was our exterminator in the film that I decapitated, his he and his teammates from Fuzz and the Lind Films, the, his brother Jason and their other partner Steve are the two cops in the film. They did a... Um, a uh, a little funny video called Halloween 60 where they spoofed the Halloween 40 trailer but made it 60 years oh, later. Oh right, yeah, so, I think I saw. Yeah, that. I don't know. Yeah, that was them. And so they were invited to the the Halloween 40 like festival out there in California, and they got to meet all these people from the, the all the Halloween films, especially the new films. And they're all saying, "Oh, we love Terrifier. This is great." So I'm like, "Oh, cool." <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, it's, it's kind of cool to know that like those guys know us. And it's like, that's pretty cool. All right. So it's, there's a, there's a lot of respect amongst the horror community. I've realized of the different, yeah. you know, the different actors. It's like, cause that's what I was worried about when I first started doing conventions, being the new guy coming in. I was like, Oh God, you know, I was so intimidated because I like, Kane Hodder, Robert England, you know, oh, right. Ryan off um, CJ Graham, Doug Bradley, you know, Bill Mosley, Sid Haig, all those guys. I'm like, <clears throat> they've been doing this for years. They're legends. And here I am, this new guy coming in. I'm like, oh, God, <laughs> they're probably they're probably going to hate me. They're probably going to, who does this guy think he is? Blah, blah, blah. He's trying to steal our thunder now and blah, blah, blah. But that was the exact opposite. They're all like, welcome, welcome, welcome. You know, they're like, you're one of us now. Welcome to the, the ranks. And I'm like, oh, wow, this is awesome. It's, just, it's it's really cool how they all support each other. Yeah. It's like they're all friends. Yeah. It's, and they're all the nicest guys, too. Yeah, which is crazy for, like, such a bizarre genre, you know? <laughs> oh, it really is. It's like these guys – Especially like guys like Kane and CJ who were yeah. just 
big, big, good God. They're both strong as ox. <laughs> and they're both just like the biggest teddy bears. It's just yeah, like, exactly. oh my gosh, you, you would not expect that. Which when you see like photos of them, like all tattooed, standing like this, you know, for like a convention oh, uh, yeah. or sure something, you think, oh shit, they're going to beat me the fuck up, you know? And then you, you, you meet them. Oh, yeah. At least I watched interviews with them and they're the nicest guys out there. Oh, they really are. They really are. It's really cool just to consider them friends now. It's just like, this is pretty sweet. And it's like, yeah. <laughs> it's went the opposite way that I thought I was going to go. Phew. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and uh, you mentioned uh, earlier that uh, two cops were also in production uh, of, like, other things in the movie. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, um, they have their own uh, film company called Fuzz on the Lens. Um, they actually started the whole scary clown thing here in the United States back oh, wow. in, like, I think 2014, where, you yeah. know, the guy, there was that guy just standing outside scaring people dressed as a clown he would just stand out he they were uh, on staten island and that was mike and his brother they were doing that and they were just filming them going all over staten island <laughs> scaring people like that and, uh, and i recently watched the the documentary wrinkles the clown and they're claiming he started that but he started doing that in 2015 I'm like oh no 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 these guys were doing it first <laughs> they did it first shut up wrinkles <laughs> yeah that's that's what i love too about this film it's like such a small group just making an awesome film you know it doesn't feel like some hollywood factory just pushing a film out there and then moving on and making another one you know um it truly it's feels just, like it, and that's what it is it's just like we're just a small team of you know people that are just very dedicated you know it's like a lot a lot of us aren't making that much money doing these things but it's because we love what we're doing yeah and we have such a dedicated crew it's just like in the like you know if a lot of people didn't love this they wouldn't be doing it like especially for what you know the pay is usually for this you know stuff because we're a low budget film mm -hmm. so it's just like that shows the dedication and it also shows like the true talent of these people because they're yeah. pulling off miracles on the budget that we have and it's even in part two it's like we've like one of these big huge set pieces we did recently is insane i'm like this was something that they would have a hard time pulling off maybe in a you know, uh, million dollar you know Hollywood film and we did it for less and it just as effective. I'm like, this is great. But it's yeah. just because these people are so dedicated. It's like mm -hmm. our, our, I I don't think our crew really gets the you know the recognition they deserve. It's like, yeah, they make me look good. <laughs> it's like and yet I wouldn't be nothing without those guys. Yeah, I wouldn't be in makeup, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't be seen in lights, I wouldn't have a costume, nothing. It was just like they they make us look good. Yeah, great. Yeah. And uh, what was it like filming the uh, scene with the upside down uh, kill? <laughs> no, that was crazy. Well, we actually filmed that over, uh, God, three different locations over months apart from each other. We filmed all the stuff with Jenna Cannell first because she had to leave us to go film the Bye Bye Man literally the next week. She left us and like two days later she was on set for Bye Bye Man. So we filmed her stuff first in Trenton, New Jersey. Then we had to leave that location for stuff that happened. And so we ended up filming the part with Catherine hanging upside down a few months later in Staten Island at this abandoned, like this part of a building, this part of a, a, a mental hospital that's abandoned. And originally we we're supposed to film one day and the room flooded. So we had to postpone for two weeks. And so it was like the day we filmed, it was like 20 degrees. And she had to do all that naked and covered in yeah. blood and with Jeez. no heat. And I'm like, oh, my God. And we would only let her hang upside down for 30 seconds at a time because it's dangerous. Yeah. And yeah, so that... we'd have to film really quickly and then swing her back up then let her rest for a little bit and swing her back down. And they're like, and film and blah, 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 swing her back up and reset. It was it was. It was tedious, very tedious, and, it's, and I know it had to been torturous for her, but she didn't complain at all. She was, I, I definitely consider Catherine to be like the MVP of the film because she went through hell for that scene. So we filmed that part, and then we filmed me cutting the, the prosthetic dummy apart on a different day, which was a, a mess too because the intestines we had, like I said, we had to postpone for two weeks. 
our, our DP forgot to refrigerate those intestines. Oh, man. Yeah, so they were rank. <laughs> and I accidentally cut into one of them, too, when I was sawing through. And I was like, oh, God. So it's good that they weren't doing sound that day. So you didn't hear all of us going, huh, 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 on set. <laughs> so that was, that was nasty. And then we also filmed at a different location on uh, Long Island with a body double for Jenna for pickups they had to do with me for like close ups and stuff like that. So it's, it's crazy what goes into like a, uh, like a, just a few minutes of film and like yeah. how it takes months to do sometimes. Yeah. But it, it is probably the most iconic scene from the first film. Uh, yeah. It definitely stands out. It's, it's like the scene where everyone, I watched it with like a group a month ago or so and, and everyone was just in disgust. So it definitely paid yep. off. I would say. Oh, that, that was the scene we were like, you know, we knew that was going to make us or break us. And when we um, were trying to get distribution, we had some people that wanted, I don't even know what studio Damien won't tell me because I think he knows it would make me mad. But um, some studios wanted to put us in theaters, and but they wanted to make massive cuts to that scene because it was so violent and gory. And Damien said, absolutely not. He's like, no, no, you're not going to cut this scene. This is going to be the scene that everybody talks about. Do not cut the scene. And I'm glad he stood by it. Yeah. It's like, yeah, because, yeah, this, that's what the, the, the fans want. And I think that's what Hollywood, mainstream Hollywood has forgotten is like, this is the stuff the fans want. They want those crazy kills like yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, just like with the, the scene in like Friday the 13th New Blood, you know, you have that scene where there's like a lawn mower or something like that. That scene yeah. was awesome to see uncut, but the footage is just lost, which is such a shame. Yeah. That is a shame. That is a shame. That's something I, I, I think is really interesting watching the Friday the 13th movies. Like, as they go on, they get more and more creative with the kills, too. Yeah. I mean, they have to oh, just stab out, you know? Oh, yeah. You, you can only just stab so yeah, many times. Exactly. You're like, oh, God, that's better. I mean, they got to space, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kane in space. <laughs> That's I do love the, love the frozen way, head definitely. shattered, though. That was cool. Oh, yeah. I love that kill. I was like, oh, man, that's great. That's great. I, I would see a Terrifier X. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> you never can. That's that. the thing I love about this character. It's like there's so many possibilities with him. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, true. Um, do you have any final words for the interview? Whew. Boy, um, I would just say thank you. Just oh, yeah, thank you to you the too. fans right now because it's just it's you it's the fans that have made us the success we are right now, and it's the fans that helped us film part two, especially. We did that Indiegogo campaign, we raised over two hundred thousand dollars. Oh wow. Yeah, I like our goal was only fifty thousand. We didn't even think we were gonna make that. Oh, we did that in three hours. We're like, holy crap! It was just the fans were so passionate about it, and and that's you know that it's it's. I'm so glad we got the budget because it's like, yeah, we didn't realize some of the things we're doing in part two are yeah a lot more expensive than we thought they were gonna be. So we're like, oh, thank oh, God we did that campaign. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's like so thank you all of you guys that have supported us, especially those that donated to the campaign. It's just like we're. We can't wait to bring you part two. We're, you know, we're almost done filming, but we had to go on lockdown here in New York. Yeah, that's and such a shame. I, oh, it's, it's so frustrating because I, I think I was maybe four or five days left on set for myself. And I'm like, I'm so close. <laughs> I'm so close to being done with this thing. And I'm like, oh, man. And there were some, like, fun scenes that we still got to film. And I'm like, oh, oh, man. I want to do them so badly. <laughs> I know, and I'm I'm so afraid we're gonna have to do them in summer when it's so hot. So that's gonna be difficult with the makeup because I'm like I'm probably gonna sweat so much. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> but we'll oh, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll yeah, make it happen though. That's the thing, indeed. Like that's the good part yeah. about the cold uh, stuff because you don't sweat. Yeah. Either. But in the cold, my nose runs like crazy, and that oh, destroys oh, right. the too. So you'll you might see some like behind the scene pictures of me where I have Q-tips in my nose, and that's why <laughs> I'm trying to keep my nose from running. Right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because by the way, the makeup looks awesome, actually. I especially, yeah. um, like, the quality on the Blu-ray is really great. And um, yeah. you can actually, 
Like it's so white, you can barely tell that there's even skin underneath it. Oh, it's fantastic. That's all Damien. He's just a talented dude. He wrote it, directed it, did all the practical effects himself. You know, it's just like there's like maybe like 0.1% CG in the whole entire film. And it's just basically just to show like the blood coming out of my eyes when I shoot myself and to uh muscle flashes. Yeah, yeah. No, those are real muscle flashes. Oh really? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, we we had a um uh a, a fake gun that we used. The blanks. Oh, oh there. nice. So, yeah. So yeah, those are real muzzle flashes, I think. As, as yeah. far as I know, they're real because I I fired that thing and you know that that thing was like the the casings are flying, the smoke's coming out. I'm like, whoa, cool. <laughs> By the way, that's yeah. really cool that the that the killer actually used a gun in a film in a slasher film. Yeah. Yeah, we get a lot of hate for that though from some people, but they, they don't think don't you know. It. I mean, yeah, it's like the, we're not the only slasher that's used guns. You know, Maniac used them. The Scream movies used guns. It's just like it's not like he just uses it willy nilly just to shoot people. Just like, yeah, I'm gonna shoot you. I'm gonna shoot you. No, he uses a gun like a slasher would use a gun. Yeah, he uses it not just to, to kill. He uses it to maim. It's like he doesn't just shoot her once in the head. He like destroys her face with that thing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and that's that's uh that's why I'm okay with it. I mean, I'm okay with uh, slasher films using guns anyways because I I feel like that just adds some realism as well. I mean, I love yeah. Maniac, um, but like I I don't get why you get all pissed at, at just using a gun, you know? Yeah, it's it's just another tool. Exactly. That's, that's the thing. Is our art's going to use whatever he can to, you know, do it. You know, it's like I mean, he, I don't think he really necessarily wants to use a gun as unless it's like a last resort. Exactly. It's yeah. just like, or if he's like, okay, well, let's experiment and see what this does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe this will be. Let's cool see. And sadistic. <laughs> yeah. Hang in tight. We're going to get. Part two out to you guys. Damien's editing right now all the stuff that we have filmed. So he sent me oh, some awesome. scenes already. And I'm like, this, you know, just little little teases. He's just like, okay, I just edit this. What do you think? And I'm like, oh, <laughs> it's, it's already looking so much better than part one. Is I think it's going to blow the first film out of the water by oh, far. Wow. I mean, it's like, I can't wait. I, to I think, oh, and I, I think the best part of this film is our, our final girl. The, the, okay. um, our actress Lauren Lavere, who plays Sienna, who is our our final girl. She's she kicks ass. She she's basically the Batman to uh, Art's Joker. So I'm I'm really excited to see how people receive her. I'm curious. I'm definitely curious. I can't wait to see it. Thank you for being here on the show. Uh, it was this is an honor. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. And, um, happy to be here. Uh, great. And um. I will see you guys next time. See ya. All right. You're pissing me off, Roger. It's gonna be wild.